good morning good morning good morning so today is sunday november the first and i hope you all had a great halloween um and i hope you all were safe so i didn't do anything for halloween um we stayed indoors basically watched some scary movies and just chill that was it um so today i have quite a few things i want to share with you and um mostly some finished projects that i have finished recently and i have a project that i've been working on for a while and i'm trying to finish it um i have one more color i'm going to add to it and then I will be done because I think it's pretty big already. So, um, as you all know, this is the weather is getting cooler and things like that. So, I have basically been in a ear warmer creating mood. So, I have quite a few ear warmers that I'm gonna show you. Um, I have a scarf and like a shawlette so without further ado let's go ahead and get started so you guys um october got away from me i had planned on making so many um breast cancer awareness items and i think i am missing a few i may have to show them on my next video but um, this is just one of the items. This is the all of the ear warmers that I'm going to show you. They are basically the Simply Twisted Ear Warmer um, that I've been making. So I made a pink one in honor of breast cancer awareness. Because um, I had some pink yarn that I was not really using. Um, and this is the Nicole... You see Studio Classics by Nicole. So this is the ear warmer. And then I have a purple one. This here, I had actually um, had made a, I had made a sock, a crocheted sock, and I think it was like a V-stitch pattern or whatnot. And I have to try to find that pattern again too and they these were more so um they came up to my calf um on me well i went to find some more purple yarn and this particular shade of yarn they did not have in the store well at least the particular store that i had went to they had a um more vibrant or rich colored purple um and so i opted out of just looking for the yarn and just went ahead and made an ear warmer i brought the project and made a ear warmer as i found it so this is the purple ear warmer and then this is some big twist value yarn That I made the same ear warmer with and this one here um this is green and then like a um burgundy and this was kind of inspired by um I remember I was watching a show and it was a reality show and I think it might be a brand name um headband and I looked online and I seen some things um, that were related to the Gucci brand so um, I've seen quite a few handmade um, ear warmers that were knitted or crocheted so this is what this ear warmer here was inspired by that particular brand and um, I, I was kind of worried about it because I've only been making the solid color ear warmers and I was like, I don't know how this is going to look with um, 
me adding the secondary color in the middle but it turned out great so like I said this is a um, a green color if you can see it <clears throat> and then just a burgundy and I'm actually going to try this on So that's basically how it fits here. Now, the um, the green yarn, I want to say it's called Patty Green by, um, it's a Red Heart Super Saver yarn. And then also the burgundy, um, in which I bought the Patty Green recently because I needed some green for another project so I had actually picked up two different greens because I, I forgot what shade of green I needed um, so it came in handy I did need this darker green um, I needed the lighter shade instead which is fine um, but the red yarn I or the burgundy I don't know exactly what color or what brand I'm sorry what brand of yarn it was I just know that I had a big cake of it. Um, it may be, it might be a Karen yarn, um, but I'm not, I'm not sure, like an older Karen um, yarn, but I'm not sure. I had it in my stash and I was like, I want to go ahead and I want to use it. And that's what I've been trying to work on, like one of my yarn bags which i'll show another time um i have been using a lot more of because i have one bag that i would carry with me all the time and the straps are um beginning to look a little ragged because <laughs> i've had it for a long time but overall the bag itself is still fine it's just the straps are looking a little ragged um, from me hanging it on different things and you know wear and tear so um, I started using this other bag that I rarely took out um, which I am falling more in love with so I've been carrying that bag more so um, and in that bag I'm able to stuff yarn in there for days and I have more so I have like four Games of yarn in, on the front side and then once I unzip it on the back side it's just filled with small cakes of yarn that or medium size like small to medium size cakes of yarn that um, I basically just threw in there you know because I didn't have anywhere else to put it at the time so I've been trying to use up all of my scrap yarn and um, you know, just random cakes of yarn that I haven't really used much or whatnot. So, those are some ear warmers there. And then I have this project here. I think I sewed in all the ends. So, this is some big twist yarn here. And I forget the color, but it's like a burgundy and then pink. And as you can see, it's like the um, granny square stitch here so I had actually started this up like two years ago I think and I got this pattern from the um, yarn label um, on the from the big twist skein and so it's a big circle scarf or some people may call it an infinity scarf and um, I just finished this recently. So I decided to take the yarn that was left from the burgundy and make it get warmer. And so this is going to be a complete set. Um, I was going to try to 
do this same stitch for the ear warmer um but i decided to go ahead and just make this a plain color um and i was going to try to incorporate the pink as well um in the ear warmer but like i said i just decided to just keep it in one color but <clears throat> This is the neck warmer. It's really warm. And I'm going to tell you, I cannot wait to actually start wearing um, some of the projects or things that I have, you know, for winter or fall, rather. Um, so I'm excited. This is my favorite time of the year. I love fall and winter just so I can, you know, wear my creations, different things that I create from patterns that I find online. And moving on, take this off. Oh, and I also have an announcement to make as well at the end of this video. Oh, I forgot this one. This is another ear warmer that I made. Um, this is from a, I made this one from a YouTube tutorial. I think, yeah, I've made this one before. So as you can see, this one is like a, um, like a turban almost here, um, or gives that knotted effect. So I've seen people wear it in the middle or wear it to either side. I prefer it off to the side. That's just me. And then this is on my left side here. And this is um, made with the remaining um, pink yarn, the big twist yarn that I made using the, um, or made with this here. Or made, I can't talk right, it did not sound right. Made this scarf with. <laughs> um, so yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I think that was all my ear warmers. So then, um, I still had some yarn left over, the pink yarn from Big Twist. And I made um, these little bandanas here. And as you can see, I have created two ties on the end of mine. Um, so... If you follow DOY 7 Creations um, here on YouTube, or if some people may know her as Jeanette um, or Soraya, um, she created these bandana um, scarves or whatnot. Um, and so I actually made two of these. So I have this pink one, and then I have this teal color as well. So basically, you would just put it on your head like so. And of course, my my bun here is <laughs> up too high, so I wouldn't I wouldn't wear it with my bun in. But if I had my bun down lower, it'll lay more flat. Um, and then. I just created, you know, <clears throat> sorry, enough room here for my ties. And I can tie it in a bow. You can see that. Or I can just kind of knot it, double knot it or so. <clears throat> so those are my two bandanas that I have using um, DOY 7 Creations um, from this Jeanette tutorial that she had and I'm going to make some more of these and what I did I did try to block these just a little bit because I've never really blocked items before so I was a little nervous, so I didn't want to, I definitely didn't want to overdo it. And I did watch a tutorial 
on um, blocking these. Um, I don't think I really had to. I just didn't. I wanted to block it just to kind of give it a try and to see um, how much more relaxed the fabric would come would become. So overall, I think I did pretty good on these and they worked up so quick um i think it took me maybe 45 minutes to an hour um to make each one of these probably not even that long but i would say at least an hour depending on what you do and that's a lot of my projects that i have it depends on what i got going on for the day if i'm stopping a lot um so yeah now this next project here this is a fiber flux um chalet and this yarn is actually um the sweet roll yarn and it's called blueberry swirl now, when AC Moore was open, and I miss, a, miss going to AC Moore, um, I was, I had went and I got, um, I think it was two for five. I think that's what the sale was at the time on these. But, um, and I had purchased these some while back, a while back, so I'm just now using the yarn. So, this is the Charlotte. I like how those colors came about. So, yeah, I got two of these. And I think I have another. I have two more. And I forget the color. But it's like a tan um, or beige. Then, like, pink and maybe some white or brown. I know it has, like, some brown. I may have that in my stash. I'm not sure. I have to double check. I thought I had got two other colors. Well, another color, but two more um, cakes. Um, so I basically, I think it came in 3.5 ounce cake and I think I used all of it except for maybe like a, um, little bit of it. It was probably about a tangerine size or so. So I probably have enough to... Maybe if I had if I get some more blue yarn or have some in my stash, I could probably start a project with or incorporate that yarn in that project somewhere. Um, but it's not enough to make a full, you know, project with. But yeah, this came out so good, and I'm glad I did stop um, this because I was just gonna keep going and make this just a full blown shawl in itself. Um, and as you can see, it has like these little ruffles here on the edge of it. So, basically, see, lay it across. And I've been playing with it a little bit to kind of see how it's going to flow. And actually, I'm going to stand up so I can show it to you better. Kind of put this in under there. Okay. So this is basically how it looks. When it's on, and it pretty much stopped right at the top of my belly button. So this will be great to wear underneath a jacket. Had to grab my ends again because they were sliding. Yeah, this would be great to wear underneath a jacket or something. 
or you know just throw it around your neck um, if it's not really you know cold enough to have a jacket but it's still cool so yeah and blue is one of my favorite colors um and pink is another color that I like but blue is my my most favorite so hence that's why I got the blue but um again this is a fiber flux um shawlette and there may be a tutorial on this I'm not sure I have to go back and look because I just I use the written pattern uh, which I found on um, Ravelry. I was searching on Ravelry and found this pattern. Um, and I also with this one, I blocked it a little bit as well. Like I said, I didn't want to overdo it. And um, I'm going to invest in getting some mats maybe at some point. I just used some um, towels and um, just stretched it out on my floor and just pinned it down in different areas. So I will probably use, um, probably see if I can find a few of those like foam mats somewhere. Um, so yeah. Um, so these are all of my projects that I have made um, in the past week or two. Now, last week, yeah, last Saturday, I wanted to go live and things like that. Um, then I, I changed it to Sunday, and it didn't happen as well. So, I don't know. I just, this past week has been hard for me because... I think from just being in a lot being under a lot of stress um, with my youngest daughter um, just trying to get like paperwork and things like that in order because you know we're doing her IEP and stuff and we were supposed to have her meeting um, I think last Wednesday or Wednesday before and then it got canceled like the day before at like five o'clock and I'm like I've gotten all this paperwork together and things like that and it got canceled so I was I was disappointed about that because I have been calling everyone and going to this place that place trying to get paperwork and signatures and it was just it was just a lot um so I think I was just under a lot of stress <laughs> and then I was just just tired too um and then this past week you guys I had a um I had three fibromyalgia flare where my body was just in pain all day and I know one day it was even like Tuesday or Wednesday I did not crochet at all I was like a little hermit crab the whole entire day and I literally sat on my couch with my head under the covers because I was just I was hurting so bad and granted I had took my medicine but I have days like that when I wake up, I'm just, I'm down for the day. You know, it don't matter how much sleep I get. Um, that's why I try to de-stress a lot, do meditating and things like that. Trying to keep myself from having those flares because I never know when it's going to happen. Um, but like I said, I took my medicine and... I was just sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting for things to change and I ended up, um, later that day I ended up having to 
um, just run me a tub of hot water and put some Epsom salt in and just soak the whole entire day. But I mean, I was hurting down to my hands, like my fingertips was hurting. I couldn't even, I could close my hands, but it hurt to close my hands. So I, I didn't crochet at all that day. Um, so the next day after, and I think my husband he stayed home that night too um, to help me with the kids. And I went to sleep real early. Um, and it, it makes me exhausted too. So I went to sleep real early. Um, I think about four o'clock that evening. And I don't I think I woke up maybe one time after that. Um and then I went back to sleep. And when I woke up the next morning, which was probably after seven, um I felt fine, like I I paced myself the whole entire day because I was like, Okay, I don't know how this is gonna go. Am I gonna have round two? or what but that day was fine the next day was rough <laughs> um it wasn't as bad but you know i was still like fatigued you know um but i and i still managed to crochet i've been working on this project here that i'm about to show you um which is a blanket that i've been working on for some time now um, and I ran out of yarn and recently went back to the store and this is where I was I was getting the green yarn because I had more white and burgundy yarn than I did green and I'm using you know more of the green than the other color so I was going for a Christmas theme or Christmas colored um, blanket and I might actually See if I can put this hook down real quick. So this is the blanket here. I'm loving the colors. So yeah, I've, I've been working on this off and on for a little while now and trying to get it done so um as you can see my let me recount and see how many rows of green i have i think it's like seven or eight um one two three four five six seven eight yep yeah, eight color um eight rows of the green two rows of the white and three rows of the burgundy so i basically kept going with that sequence seven two and three um for each color that i'm doing so i'm on my third row of the burgundy <clears throat> and after i finish my third row of my burgundy i'm going to hook my green up i'm going to do seven rows but well, actually a total of eight rows but i'm going to do seven rows of the um granny square stitch and then just for the edging, I'm considering um, doing a row of Pico stitch. And I don't know if I'm going to use this same hook. I did this whole blanket with a eye hook. Um, and I think most of the time when I do a granny square um, project like this, I'm leaning more so to my eye hook, which is fine. I'm just I just noticed that over the last couple of days, I'm like, I always lean to my, or grab my eye hook when I do my granny square. Um, I've done it with a J and maybe a K hook. Um, I think I have another granny square blanket that I'm doing now with some super bulky yarn. And it's a, a L or either a N hook that I'm using. I think the biggest that I've done is um, maybe a P, and that was like 
a while ago, but I, I don't recall ever finishing. I may have finished that blanket. I don't know um, if I didn't frog it. So, um, yeah, I have, like I said, just been working on this blanket here, trying to finish it and um, trying not to let my pain get the best of me. <coughs> Excuse me, I have sickle <clears throat> in my throat. So, um, I have not seen my family in a while now. Um, so I think today what I'm going to do, I will be taking this blanket with me because I do tend to take my yarn with me just about everywhere I go. I'll be taking this blanket with me and um, I'll be visiting my family. I think it's been about four. I mean, some of them I've FaceTimed or whatnot, but not physically seen. I haven't seen my mom and my grandparents and things like that. Um, so I'll probably take my, um, yeah, I'll take my both of my kids with me. Sometimes I'm leaving my youngest one here um, because most of the time when I'm getting ready to leave she's asleep and I don't want to um, wake her up and things like that so and then with this virus going on too <clears throat> but this will be I haven't taken her around anybody since this virus um, has hit my youngest daughter um, and even when we're out, like, if we do visit family, like, we're pretty good at wearing our masks and stuff anyway. And, you know, washing our hands and stuff like that. Um, because, one, my grandfather, he has a lot of health issues. And his lungs are already terrible. Um, so, if we visit him, like, I myself... I don't go around him or like into his room unless I really have to, like if he needs help with something, um, because he's, he's not as active, um, and there are a lot of days where he's weak just from, you know, either oxygen levels and things like that acting up, um, and he, he battles with pneumonia already, even before this pandemic hit, he's battled with pneumonia, um, off and on through the years and um like i said he has some other lung issues going on as well which causes him to be on oxygen 24 7. so um you know if i go if i visit my grandparents you know i'll go to the door you know stick my head in hey and that's it um and of course, I have my mask on because I have my grandmother too. And, you know, just being around everybody, you don't always know where people are going and who they're around. Um, so, like I said, we, we try to stay on top of keeping our mask on and just keeping things clean. But um, I feel bad sometimes because I don't take my youngest daughter with me. So, and they haven't seen her since the beginning of the year, like physically seeing her. So, um, and good thing is it's not a whole lot of people either um, that'll be around. So, I'll take her out today for the first time. And anytime I'm out as well, like my family is always asking, where's? Where's Charity? That's my little girl's name. And I'm like, she's at home with her dad. She's at home with her dad. So, um, and luckily, you know, with things that my youngest daughter have going on, like, thankfully, she has been good, you know, because like I said, we, we haven't really been taking her out other than see doctor's appointments and stuff like that. Um, and not really going places, you know, that we don't usually go to. 
or don't really have to go to. So, yeah. And my oldest daughter, she is pretty good at wearing her mask. And if she sees anybody without their mask, <laughs> she's definitely going to say something. So, um, and then sometimes I feel like, you know, if a young child can say something about even just a grown up wearing, not wearing their mask, um, that, that says something, definitely. Um, if a young child has more common sense, <laughs> and I get it, you know, some people don't do well in them, but, you know, I just feel like out of respect, I feel like we should all try to protect one another because you never know um, how things can end up, you know, so, um, I mean, everybody has their right or has their own opinion about it, but, you know, I know for me and mine, we're going to protect ourselves and try to respect other people's boundaries and things like that, you know, protect other people's space. But yeah, I just, it's just funny to me sometimes, my six-year-old, she will, she will call you out <laughs> if you don't have your mask on. Um, I mean, of course, she doesn't just, sorry, my oldest one is, my youngest one is waking up, but she doesn't just walk up to people, you know, but she will say something. Um... As to, I don't want no coronavirus, or where your mask at, you know. And it's all jokingly, you know, in a kid way, but nothing too harsh. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, let's see, I have... Three more edges to do, and then I'll be done with this. Um, so I have been looking through my all of my work in progress items that I have. I have a big box or tote of work in progress items that I have not finished. And I've been slowly trying to work on those, but um, I haven't gotten, you know, into them as much as I wanted to. In my um, my bedroom, like earlier on, once um. Everything was pretty when everything was pretty much shut down. Um, I had purchased a table like to do sit and do all my craft stuff at because I was toting my items from my living room to my bedroom, my bedroom to the living room, outside on the balcony, you know, in it was on my kitchen table. So it was just everywhere. Wherever I went, that's where my yarn was. So um, so my husband, I was like, you know, I'm just going to order a table. I'm going to find a spot in our bedroom because, you know, we had some space in there that I could, you know, take up. And I, um, made myself a little, or found myself a little spot in there and put the table. Now, I still want to move some things. Um, around in there, um, but it did help getting that table because I don't have to tote my work everywhere. Now, I'm at my kitchen table now because my, um, husband is, of course, he's sleeping. And I'm doing a video. And my whole family was up 
It is five minutes to six now in the morning. My whole family was up at 2 a.m. this morning. And my husband and my oldest daughter, they just went and laid back down at 4. And I have my my um, youngest here. Um, if you heard her crying. So, yeah, we were all up and I don't know why. We, just, we were just up. And I did, it did feel like um, it was like 5 o'clock. I don't know if I was just sleeping that hard or what, but it felt like it was like at least 5 in the morning. So, of course, me being me, once I get up, I can't go back to sleep because I have so much on my mind. Um, and I'm like, I just want to crochet, I want to crochet. So, that's all I've been doing. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, my day starts. I don't go back to sleep unless I'm really really you know tired and having a bad day already um if that's what's on my mind I'm gonna get up and do it so yeah so you guys I'm looking forward to visiting or seeing my family um cause I wanted to go last week and I just didn't have the energy to do it and that's one thing I, that I would say that has been one pro that has come out of this pandemic is I've actually been able to see my family more beforehand um, with me working and then you know um, everybody else's schedule and stuff like that it was always hard for me to visit my family like I wanted to and I was honestly I'm not I haven't even fully went back into work um, because you know my oldest daughter is on in virtual academy and then I have my youngest daughter who may have doctor's appointments and things like that during the week so I don't really have a lot of free time um, per se, and my husband's work schedule is, like, kind of crazy, too, so it's, like, one of us has to make the sacrifice, and he's able to watch the kids, but, um, some during the day, but, you know, if he has to get his sleep to work second and third shift, you know, and so it was like I'll just have to do the weekends or you know even on your days off I can probably go to work or whatever but right now I've just pretty much been working on the weekend um at first it was like every other weekend when I first started out going back to work and I went back to work the first weekend of August and now um, I'm literally working every Saturday and um, I only do a few hours which is okay with me right now um, because I'm just not physically I already had some other issues going on too because of the type of work I do so I'm trying to get those issues straightened out um, and I'm just trying to slowly work myself back in um, so that I'm not causing more damage, you know, too soon, too fast. And um, even with you know, my father, my elder. Like I said, I don't know when that's ever going to flare up on me. So I just don't want to. Right now, I'm just not ready to do it all um, like I used to. I'm not capable some days um, to physically 
to do a whole lot like I was. So I just learned over the, I would say the last two years to um, just pace myself, do what I can do and what I can't, don't worry about it. Because <clears throat> I only get one me. I have to take care of me. There's nobody else is going to do it. So. <clears throat> I'm, I'm really thankful and grateful for my husband when I'm having my bad days and in pain and don't have the energy to do much. Then he can definitely watch the kids for me or take care of them. I should say I'll, I don't want him to sound like a babysitter, but. <laughs> You all get what I'm, what I'm trying to say. So, you guys, um, I'm coming around to another edge. Got a little bit more to do. Um, so hopefully the next time that you see this, um, it'll be done. But before I go, my little announcement that I have. Um, some of you probably heard me mention maybe a couple of times in the past that I wanted to open up a Etsy shop. So, um, a few months ago, I kind of gave the whole online selling thing a little, you know, test drive or whatever on, um, I think it's called Mercury, and I was very nervous about doing that, so, um, just last week, I ended up opening a Etsy shop, and it is called Shell Touch, because my middle name is Michelle, and that's mostly what um, people who like really, really know me. That's what they know me as Michelle. So, um, and they call me Shell for short. It's my nickname. So all of my family, and you know, mostly um, some friends or whatever. Um, so, Shell is my nickname, and um, I just added the touch on there because I have not only the crocheting and the knitting that I do, but I have made, um, have gotten into um, soap making and also some jewelry making or whatever, and I'm just, I like to do crafts, so I can post anything at any given time, um, so that's why I decided to do Shell Touch, so um, I haven't really, I don't think I've ever really did a video on soap making, um, I have, like I said, I've just made it, but I've never posted a video of me actually making soap or whatnot. Um, I'm trying to, I did take a little bit of a break from jewelry making once I started um, making some jewelry pieces. Took a little bit of a break, um, so... Hopefully, uh, one day soon, I will be able to come and show you some things that I have made um, in the past and some things I recently started making because I don't think I've ever really shared those things. Um, so, yeah. So, my Etsy shop is open. I am still 
trying to add things. Um, I have a heap load of photos that I need to post. Um, I have things that I need to take pictures of that I want to sell. And um, some things I'm still trying to um, make sure I'm kind of at that um, sweet spot for the pricing. Um, because I, I really do take this serious like I've just been putting the whole thing off with the Etsy shop off because I was very nervous <laughs> about it um so I, I still have some learning to do on it and trying to get you know the shipping and all of that stuff out of the way um and just some other things um, as well, as far as like having a logo and all of that good stuff. Um, so, like I said, I'm slowly just slowly doing things with it. So hopefully, as I learn more and grow more, I can do more. So. Um, and this was just, it, it was very, I would say I was nervous, but it, it's exciting too, um, because I'll be doing something for myself, um, and doing something that I love, like, I love making stuff, I love working with my hands, um, and I've always been like that for years always been like that and this is definitely um it's therapy for me to create things um or whatnot even though it's you know something that i'm not really creating on my own per se as far as like writing up the patterns and all of that and that's something that um i've been you know, dabbling in um, here and there is just trying to work on my own patterns and figure out like what can I do, what can I make um, that nobody else has ever made or design that nobody else has ever never designed. And I know it takes time and it takes dedication and hard work. So I don't know, maybe one day I'll get there. Um, and I know there are a lot of people out there that was just like me when I first started, well, had, you know, the nervousness and things like that, um, when they first started their Etsy shop and whatnot, so, like I said, I'm just going to keep on working, um, and... Those that have followed my shop, um, I thank you all for taking a look at it um, and supporting me on it as well. And I try my best, those that have followed or, you know, those who have posted their Etsy shop, I try my best to follow every one of you all. Because a lot of you all have some pretty nice things. Um, so, yeah. But I really appreciate it. So, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. I am coming around back to the beginning of my row and I'll be adding the green and this bad boy is going to be finished today. No questions asked. Today is going to be finished. Um, so um, please feel free if you have not subscribed to my channel. 
please feel free to subscribe, hit the bell, um, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below if you'd like, and also I'm going to put the link to my Instagram and also to my Etsy shop for those of you who want to follow me on those two sites. And um, yeah, you all have a blessed Sunday and I will see you guys soon. Bye-bye.